Ready for something scary? Okay! You're in the right spot. The Ice Scary Podcast collects spooky, creepy news stories to discuss and give you chills. Whatever. Just so you know, hosts discuss topics they've just learned about and have no prior knowledge. Their views are just for your entertainment. Hey, welcome back to another episode of I Scary. <laughs> Today we have a new guest host. I'm happy to introduce to you this Darcy Pashik. Hey, Anne, how you doing? Great. I'm, now I'm, gonna, I'm calling you our great white north. Am I saying that? <laughs> <laughs> He's from the great white north. Yeah, I'm from the great white north. We're talking northern lights. Yeah. Well, then that means that you probably see some really uh, freaky things up there. <laughs> We have winter eight months of the year, so uh, it's definitely a place that if you want to come visit, bring a big coat. Oh, sounds good. Um, well, you know, the, the gist of our show is to talk about some scary news stories and see uh, what we think. Uh, you know, a part of the thing, not only are we going to talk about them, we're also going to wonder, do we believe this? Uh, do we want to call a little question mark on it and go, I don't know if that's true. So keep that in mind. We'll have to see it. I'm excited to get ready and get going. All right. All right. All right. Let's set the scene a little bit. Young family, happy husband, wife, cute kids, wonderful neighborhood. So it seems. And your dream home that you're moving in when all of a sudden. Mom, what's that? Someone left a note on our door. And the note says you're being watched by some mysterious man. Oh my God, I'm calling the police. We can't live here. And it all falls apart from there. Interesting. What do you think? I don't know how I, I don't know how I'd react to that. I mean, if I was living in the house, not good. I mean, uh, it's hard to think somebody would buy something like that, knowing that going into it, I'm thinking, but... Uh, yeah. Well, you wonder, I, I, on my mind, I'm kind of thinking, who did this to buy the house out from them? I don't, you know? Right. Yeah. Somebody in the background just looking for a cheap real estate deal. Yeah. yeah it could be. Who knows, right? <laughs> Desperate real estate. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, that is really freaky. And how come they could not, like, put a camera and, and get some kind of footage of who's leaving these notes? Yeah, and, and agencies are involved in the, you know, in this day and age, you would think there's got to be some way to backtrace those things and, and understand where it's coming from. I mean, it, yeah. I hear you. Um, maybe it would help if we got the full news report. I'm going to throw it over to our newscaster, Sydney Story. Take it away, Sydney. News. Nasty Neighbors from NBC Today. Known as the New Jersey Watcher House, a home plagued by mysterious, threatening letters finally sells. Back in 2014, a young couple with three children bought their dream home, a 1905 Dutch colonial revival. But days after moving in, they received a threatening note. The author claimed that his grandfather watched the house and now it was his turn. The notes continued promising lethal revenge for some unknown slight, labeling the family's children as young blood. The couple instantly moved their family out. Even though they took the threats to police and a former FBI agent, no one could locate the anonymous letter writer. Even though the letters kept coming, the home sold well under market value, with no word yet if the new owners have met their nasty neighbor. I mean, in this particular case, it would be very disturbing getting that mail every day, but um, I don't know. I'd like to pick up the property, move in there myself. I'd have no problem with that. You'd have no problem. I, I just camp out on the on the front door. No, if it's a good deal, why not? <laughs> yeah, well under market value. I mean, and, uh, I did see a picture, which I, sorry, I don't have for you. It, it was a huge, big, you know, oh, I bet. gorgeous home. 1904, you said, was a construction date? 1905. Yeah, I don't know. Would that bother you, though? Would you take something like that and, and wa not want to be there? Um, I've only ever had this happen at the end when I was moving out of uh, a home. I did have uh, the neighbor from across the street who was I'd never talked to at all, had seen sometimes sitting on his porch. 
And he came over to say goodbye and then say, you know, I was always watching when you came home to make certain you were safe. What? Okay, that's creepy. That did. It really creeped me out. Yeah, but you knew where it was coming from. You know, you were there. It was easy to understand what was happening. But in this case, you know, you got a certain element of unknown. I don't think there's anything paranormal here. I don't think they uh, put uh, put this stuff through the mail, but still, right? It would mm. freak you out, especially if they referenced your little kids. Uh, uh, yeah, as in, uh, would they say blood bloodbath? Young That's, blood. Uh, young young blood. blood. Like young blood for to take? or I don't know. So is there any history like with the house itself? Like, does it, does it talk any backstory to the house? I mean, 1905 goes back quite a ways. So. Well, if the grandfather was also watching, it doesn't necessarily mean that he was also leaving notes. Right. Right. (laughs) Otherwise I would go back to who I bought it from and go, what's up? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Not part of the real estate deal. How come nobody let us know about this? Yeah, but now why is it going from below market price? You would think that, you know, now that's, you know, people moving out are just, you know, literally trans, you know, moving uh, real estate across. Who's going to be the next owner? So is it still for sale now? Do you know, do you have an update on the story? No, they, up, no, they, they sold the house finally. So uh, they both it said they moved in in 2014 and this started uh-huh. to happen. So they just recently were able to sell it to someone that didn't mind. But uh, I that's sad to think that that well oh I, I do remember that part of the article said that they rented it out for a while and the renters also received threatening notes so how do you have that conversation when you're selling it with somebody you know how does that conversation even go <laughs> like excuse me i have a house for sale um just there's one <laughs> side effect here that uh you know there's people coming after you through the mail that are going to always be uh terrorizing you how do you even accept that? Uh, I'm thinking this is a this is a, a young couple with uh, looking at the deal, not versus the uh, living conditions potentially, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's like the house has a stalker. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't think it would bother me. I think at the end of the day, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm somewhat of a realist, so I think I would look at it. You know, I'm not too worried. Um, but I can see, you know, definitely a lot of people would be pretty paranoid because if you didn't know how it got in there, like, was it being delivered by like U.S. Postal Service or was it just something, you know, kind of put in? The it box? sounded like it was left on the doorstep or in the yeah. house somewhere, or not in the house, but at the front door somehow. Which you would think then you could put a camera up and catch the person. I mean, we can catch people stealing Amazon packages by the hour so yeah. i think we can find uh somebody that's got some sort of it's, it's well, obviously i guess in 20 2014 they couldn't but uh yeah there still had to be surveillance cameras right oh absolutely yeah i'm a bit of a tech guy i think you could have made something yeah. work i mean even that i mean little uh little fun stakeout on your front porch or your you know around the back or just you know buddy up with a neighbor across the street and just watch for a little little stakeout i think you could figure it out pretty fast hard to say I'm with you. I, I think that's what I would do. Yeah. If you're already in, you're already moving in, you're living there. I mean, th- that's the thing. It's like, okay, you got a letter, but nothing actually happened. Wouldn't right. you, I mean, I hate to say I'd wait, want to wait for something to happen when my children are in harm's yeah. way, but I yeah. think I would wait for, you know, someone to leave a dead animal on my doorstep or something. <laughs> <laughs> basic instinct yeah i get it i get it no yeah. i i think you're right i think i would have some sort of investigative uh mindset around this to figure out exactly how i could find out because you know you put an investment into a property i mean I, I doubt a house like that isn't cheap no matter uh how devalued it is so uh, yeah i would i would definitely find out get to the bottom of it and you got to think too in a neighborhood like that yeah, there's got to be more people to know a little bit more about it i would think yeah really a time for a little block party say so who's trying to get this from me right <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i'm too suspicious i'd be very suspicious of this you could look creative too i mean you know they got ink dyes on your mailbox you know you could have something in case it's your neighbor right you could have it so when they touch your mailbox the whole hand goes red or something to that effect i don't know i think you could really put i would have fun with it i'm pretty sure i would have fun with this because um i wouldn't let something like that get get to me I'm with you. I would be like, yeah, I can see that conversation with the law enforcement later. Uh, I was just having fun with it, officer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would love to see a picture of the house because I think 